well, you're not daft, you do analyse your own chess games, but maybe you're not sure if you're doing it correctly or whether you're getting the most out of it. Or sometimes maybe you're a little bit overwhelmed by the computer analysis that keeps throwing up you know, the mistakes and blunders and you're not sure if, if you're approaching it in the right way. So in this video, I'm going to talk you through how to analyse your own chess game successfully. So you're an 1100 rated player, you've just played a game of chess and then you try to analyse a game, you go back over it, you do the computer analysis thing and this is the type of thing you get back. Right, I'm just going to flip through the game really quickly. Blunder, blunder, mistake, blunder, blunder, mistake, inaccuracy. <laughs> Blunder, 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 checkmate. So it's perfectly understandable if beginner players uh, feel a little bit overwhelmed by by such uh, analysis. So at no point am I, am I criticising you know, the functions that's available on places like Lee Chess. You know, far from it. It's an absolutely amazing website. And chess.com's got a good analysis function as well. So And the other websites out, out there will probably have the similar things. So... I'm just going to look at one more thing that's available on this website and, and maybe on others as well. And there are still issues with that. So let's just have a look. And then I'm going to show you how I would approach analysis properly. So you do get this learn from your mistakes system, which comes up, uh, which is, is useful and can, can be really, really good. But it still can be quite problematic. So let's, let's just do a few here. I'll just show you what I mean. So uh, it says uh, 3F3 was played. Find a better move for white. Let's just look at it from the white point of view. Uh, rather than try to look at it from the white and the black point of view, which is more natural. Uh, so in the game, uh, this player played f3, and we're asked to find a better move. Well, you know, it, obviously the best move is just taking the pawn, but, you know. Uh, so, okay, maybe the player finds that in the analysis and thinks, oh, I could have just took the pawn. Right, good move. Next. Uh, and then we get a3 is a, mis is it a mistake or a blunder. Is a, it says mistake. Yeah, it's a blunder, though. It says blunder. And then we're asked to find the best move instead. So maybe the player plays around. If you make a wrong move, it tells you to try again, I think. That's the way it works. How they do it's been a remember. Yeah, it says you can do better trying another move. And you, you can play, play around with that. And you think, oh, the pawn's hanging. I could just take the pawn. All right, and uh, and that type of thing. So let's look at it again. Same thing. So this is a blunder because, obviously, the pawn's hanging. Uh, so we can take the pawn and you know that's an idea and carry on good move and then in situations like this it's like take the pawn take the pawn take the pawn uh well i did take the pawn in this one and now you're telling me it's a blunder All right so this is what i did in the game and you asked me to find me a better move and then so okay and then uh, let's just make a random move let's bring the knight back in is that right it analyzes it you can do better, and then you make make a few moves saying you can't find it, you can just click uh, view the solution, click on view the solution, knight g3, well why is that a better move, you know, why why is that better, you know, than taking the pawn, like, I don't understand, uh, and then it just says next, and then you wrote to the next blunder and the next mistake, and you sort of ask to train it in, in a similar way, and I think... You know, some will make sense to some players and some, some just won't make sense. And then even the ones that do make sense, what are you supposed to do with that? Right, okay, I'll take the pawn, I'll take the pawn. You know, what if that situation never arises? You know, what, what's worth keeping and what's worth forgetting? So so that's what I'm going to address next. So what I've done is I've downloaded the raw game PGN. There's a link below the analysis function where you can do that. And I'd much rather work with a, a very clean sort of uh, PGN file. So what I've got is nothing. There's no like loud blunders or no computer stuff jumping out. You know, it's just a nice clean uh, real PGN of the game. Also, I should just say that this is the first game that I came to when I did a, a completely random search of around 1100 rated players. And this is the first game I went to. And I, I haven't uh, specifically chosen this game for particular reasons to emphasize any particular points. I literally just picked up the first game or so and I thought I'd go with that one. So you've got the raw PGN file, or you've not uh, initiated a, a computer analysis, and you've got the original file. Uh, what next? So what I would do, I was I would break this down into uh, three different steps, three different stages, and the main objective in the whole of the three steps is to take something from this game, right? Take something from this game that you can apply to future games, okay? And selecting that. So we're going to do that, but let's just have a look at the the steps then. First step would include uh, a little bit of opening analysis, like just a little bit. Uh, not very much for beginners, probably more opening analysis as you get as you move up these sort of ratings. The second step would include uh, an analysis without the engine, 
and the third step would include analysis with the engine. Now that sounds like a lot of hard work, but it doesn't have to be hours and hours of uh, analysis. You know, you could, depending on what time you've got, you could sort of minimize it down into a, a 10 minute frame if you want to. You know, I used to do this with Blitz games and used to spend five minutes doing this. But, you know, the longer that you've got for it, probably the better. You're getting a happy medium between playing and analyzing. So let's look at the first step. So for step one, I'm going to use the database, the opening book that's available just on the click on the book below where the file here. And I'm going to use both the masters and the lie chess one. And for the lie chess setup, what I normally do is select all speed formats. And uh, until recently, I don't, I don't believe that you could add below 1600. Uh, but let, let's maybe just keep what I normally do and go 1600 plus, all set and click on that. And it's a fantastic resource in the millions of games in here. And I'm going to use both of these just to help me out with the, the openings a little bit. Yeah, again, for beginners, you know, I don't believe in studying opening theory as such because you know these players have not lost this chess game or won this chess game due to theoretical opening knowledge. Right, but there's still something you can take from the opening just a little bit, and you can use these databases very briefly just to help you on that on that sort of journey. So for now, I'll just uncheck the database, and as the white player, obviously I don't know what the white player's knowledge is of the openings, but I'm just going to assume that they've got some sort of general knowledge. And let's just have a look, you know. So they they go for they go into the uh, Vienna game set up. So I imagine the you know the player's got some sort of you know, I don't know, some sort of general opening ideas around the Vienna. And what I'll do, I'll keep playing until I hit a point where, oh, you know, something's a little bit unusual or something's unexpected or the opening went differently. And I think this one actually is, is fairly early on a move two. So I wouldn't imagine that the player would have maybe faced F5 in this situation because, you know, it's not a very good move, you know, because it just unnecessarily exposes this diagonal and just gives a free pawn but whether the beginner player would know that i'm not sure but let's just have a look uh at this then so what i would do i'll get to this point and at this point where i'm not sure about f5 and i would click on the database and the first thing i would do is i would I'll put f5 on the board and i'll flick to the masters and see what did the masters do right and there are no games in the master database for f5 not not surprising really so this does tell you something as a player that this is not a good move Okay, it's not played at all, and it's not in the the. If I move two, we're out of book already. So um, what I then do, I would then do is click on the lie chess one, and I would look at where f5 comes in on the list. So go back, right, and it, you can see here that it's way down uh, the move order, right, and you know there are five hundred and thirty-five thousand games, which sounds a lot, but when you put it into the context of like ten million and six million and two million and one point eight million. Uh, you can tell that you're not going to be facing this f5 move hardly ever, maybe never again. So already I'm thinking it's hardly worth it to, to sort of like take anything from this. But what maybe happened in this game, you know, and I'm saying maybe obviously, is that after f5, perhaps white was like panicking about taking this pawn, thinking there's some sort of nasty trap coming. Right, and maybe, you know, they should obviously consider the check first thing, but this fails because of g6. So. Maybe that's why in the game White just played this pawn to uh, f3 because he wasn't sure what to do. So maybe what I'd do then, I would look at this and I'd look at the database uh, and I'd think, well, there's absolutely no problem. Of e takes f5, you know, there's nothing for black. It's just a good game for White, and the, you know the game goes on really. So I would take one thing from this, and that is just not bothering with f5, right? Not bother to memorize that sort of move or anything like that. Just realise that f5 is nothing to be nothing to be scared of. So you know, I go back to my original openings in the Vienna. If you know the main lines, knight c6, carry on, whatever, and and the white may be prepared for that. But this f5 line, nothing to learn there. Move on to the next stage. So the next stage is where the fun begins. And what I recommend in this next stage is you know going through without an engine and just looking for major things in the game, major turning points in the game, key moments, right? Not looking at every single move, not looking at the inaccuracies or, you know, the even the mistakes sometimes, just the major, you know, the major swings in the game, losing pieces, you know, potential checkmates, things like that. So I'd cycle through uh, until I find, until I think I find that these elements, you know, and obviously the stronger you get, 
the more then you look at the mistakes and the, and the inaccuracies and things like that. But certainly on, on this sort of level, you're just looking to sort of get rid of the blunders, you know, minimise the blunders and do that by just looking for them yourself. So flicking through the game, like such as this move, you know, I don't think this is a good move. It just moves a knight again and it gains a tempo on the bishop, yeah, but he puts a knight on a rubbish square, blah, blah, blah. But I'm not really interested in that. At this stage, I'm interested in, you know, where are my pieces? Where, why am I losing pieces? Let's have a look. So I keep flicking through the game and I'm not even interested in this knight folk. Uh, I think locally, uh, white does have this check to escape it. Now, maybe they saw that at, at this stage, right, and they saw this idea of, of playing... Uh, c3 to, to allow that if they did then that's a really nice move uh, to, to get out of this knight fork like that and you can do it like that but it's not something i'm going to stop on at that point there's a couple more significant points which comes about here so in this position white give the rook up for the knight right and i was thinking well is there anything else i could have done so i'm giving i'm giving the exchange up which you don't want to do if you if you've got a better move so as the white player, I'm thinking, well, obviously I can't come here, and it's, it's ridiculous anyway. Can I not just bring the king here, 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 here? Uh, what, what, you know, what's the idea? So my first thought actually here is, can we not come to b1 and took the king away on a2? Right. So what I'd actually do in the in the game, I would move it in the analysis, and you get a separate analysis line. Uh, so then maybe you would have to consider the check naturally, and then tucking the king away. On onto a2. Now this looks dangerous. You know, if ever you've got a bishop come into this square, then you're going to lose the the queen. But these pieces are, you know, not really taking part in the action at all at the moment. And this bishop's blocking the development of the bishop. So uh, this looks safe for the time being. This looks possible. So I'd leave that in there. Leave that in the analysis pane, and then move on with the game. And then maybe the engine. I'll check that, seeing if that would have been a good move or not. That's for the for the next stage. So let's keep going. So go back to the main game takes takes now this loses the piece as well so this is significant because she's losing a whole piece so maybe this is not the best move is there another move that doesn't drop the bishop well the first thing that springs to mind is uh, knight g3 so this holds the bishop for a while at least so e4 does occur to me as a move because then there's this idea of, of removing the defender the threat of that takes pawn takes and then rook taking bishop so then how to deal with that that's that's another issue you know maybe this just fails anyway but you know it's, at that point you still try that move right you still try to do that because black has to find the move but is there another point at this move then that we can do to try and save the bishop it's not looking great it's got to be honest uh i can't find anything offhand immediately so this just looks like a really bad position for white you know and then you play around like that i'm just going to speed up for the process of this video so the next stage is analysis with the engine now i think it's it's worth keeping in mind here that you've got to really limit what, what you're looking at otherwise you can still get overwhelmed by putting the engine on so what i would start with is just looking at those analysis lines that that we looked at in the uh, analysis without the engine on, on step two first i'd look at those and then I'd sort of look at the wider, I'd do a wider sweep through. So let's just have a look at the analysis lines with the engine. Okay, so I'll go back to, to this point, and then I'll put the engine on. And I, I you know, I just got basic settings on the engine. I don't use powerful things. It, we're not, it's not necessary. We're just looking for major sweeps. So uh, let's have a look at this line. So in the game, Y obviously went into the exchange. Right, and we looked at this line instead of that coming king b1. Let's put king b1 on the board. King b1, yeah, it's not good either. I'm <laughs> yeah, not really surprising. It's it's pretty pretty bad position. So king b1, why is this not a good idea? And then you sort of have to play through the top line of analysis. So, I mean, really, it's just a bad position because these pawns can come forward. So yeah, after b5, then it's the black. The engines like. You've got to make a balance between engine moves and sensible moves. So obviously you're going to move knight c5, which is obviously recommended. Bishop takes, pawn takes. And I think the positions are starting to crumble, really. D6, I mean, d6, whether you play d6 or not. But you've got to just sort of play around and interpret these lines as, as why is this particularly bad. And it's not bad in the sense that the king's you know, in any danger coming to A2. So we weren't, we weren't wrong in that idea. It's just White's overall position is not very good. 
So, so this, so this idea then, what we can take from that, I'd, I'd turn the engine off now on that point. What we can take from that is uh, that actually is not better necessarily because the position's just so bad. But you've got to interpret the engine. You know, it's it's, it's like, is this a better move? Like, is is it better to give up the exchange or is it better to move the king? Well. I think it's still a better move to bring the king into this position, right? Because you, you, we're not playing Stockfish 14 or whatever it is. Okay, we're playing a human being. And I think the idea is that keeping the material on the board and playing on is better than giving up the exchange at this point. So in this position, we're looking about how to keep the, the bishop alive. And the engine it does, does recommend knight g3. Uh, but after knight g3, you know, it is the e4 idea comes up as well as bishop e7 but that's just because black's got a superior position so yeah there is nothing against this line really uh it's just suggesting just you know it's it's all over really it's suggesting just to give up pieces uh, randomly really um because at least this is a pawn back right you can't take both the, the knight and the rook at the same time but yeah in this position there was nothing better than playing uh, knight g3 so I think, you know, you have to be sort of pleased with your analysis. If you found this in the analysis, knight g3 was the best move. And, you know, we're not playing against Stockfish, like I say. So you, you do have to sort of, you know, pat yourself on the back at times and you find find that find the right moves uh, and so on. So, yeah, so that's that's one thing. The first stage of this is just to check that analysis. And then the next stage is to do a general sweep. So what I would do is look for, for large swings in the game, right? And I'm, when I'm talking about large swings, I'm talking blunders are sort of like three, aren't they, really? So something like that. I'm not looking at anything that's one or maybe even two. And I'm looking if I can pick up any additional knowledge. So, yeah, the computer really does hit the uh, F5 line. And I'm just going to cycle through looking for major swings, especially major swings when, when you're in a winning position to a losing position. All right. So, yeah, obviously, the moves not very good. And let's have a look. So maybe this move comes on the radar as, as a mistake, as a blunder, because it, it drops quite a lot. So you might want to say, well, why is this bad? And then the engine will say, well, because black can pick up this pawn. And instead of playing this move, you could have taken the pawn, which was similar to the uh, original engine sort of analysis with the sort of uh, try again stuff thing that's in there. So that, that's a that's similar idea for that one. But you can find that yourself by doing this. Uh, so let's just carry on through the game, cycling for anything major. Here's a major thing as well. Right, and this was in the original puzzle as well. So taking the pawn is a mistake because we have to anticipate the knight coming in. So this is why knight g3 was better to anticipate the knight than then stop the knight coming into the knight fold position, uh, which wasn't explained really in the original puzzle. So let's just cycle through, look for any more major swings in the game. So we've sort of looked at this, so I'm not going to focus on this uh, particularly. Like Obviously, if I was black, I would be doing the same for the other end. And then there's a major swing here, look. So we go from, you know, almost a queen down in terms of computer analysis, minus 8 to plus 6.5. So this is a major, major swing, and it's a major, major point. So it's probably the most important point, uh, maybe from the whole game, actually, this point here. So what what's, what's the engine found? And it's found this really nice idea of just bullying up on against the bishop because of the back rank checkmate threat idea. And... What this does, it takes advantage of the fact that the queen has come away from this file. Right, and we can turn the engine off now. Uh, it's, it's annoying, <laughs> basically. Uh, so it takes advantage of that, uh, gangs up on the, the bishop, threatening checkmate. And then after this move, you know, black has to sort of play as h6. And then you, you can take, let's put that on the board actually, h6 takes. And then we can pick up pieces here, I imagine. Uh, and then uh, White's right back in the game. Flip the computer back on. Uh, yeah, White's just right back in the game because of the material. So that is a, a major, a major thing that we've found. So of the computer analysis stage then, 
you know, it gets a little bit messy on the first case. The second case, I, I think, is a little bit more clear, but it's it's still losing, but you still play, still play it. So what have I learned from the computer analysis overall? Well, the the first two lines that I put in, uh, a little bit unclear, but I still think that we we made the right moves in in the analysis. Uh, but we have found a really nice move at the end, and I'll show you what to do about that move next. So as you can see, the engine analysis is you know, it's really messy and it's really difficult to sort of deal with. And I think you know it helps if you're a more experienced player to be able to interpret the engine and to be able to say, no, actually, this is still better, and you know, because it's a human move uh, and things like that. So it's definitely better if you've got a, you know a stronger player or you've got a coach to work with that that, that can do that or, you know, your opponent, you can discuss it together. So you definitely have to use the engine as a tool, but it's got definitely got limitations and, and it's not something that you can 100% rely on. So anyway, we found this position. And for me, the, the whole takeaway of this whole game for White would be this this one position, uh, really, because look, looking back at the opening, there's nothing much to really take away from that. And then there was a couple of moves uh, in the analysis that we found but really, White was still losing in, in, in all those positions. So the, the one thing I would take away from game is, is this position for White. And this is something that I would consider saving if I was the White player, maybe saving it to a database, maybe upload, uploading it to Chessable or some other platform or something like that, or creating a PGN file or writing it in a book or something. I don't know, but some way that this idea is really significant. And same for the Black player. I think you know this is a, the key moment of the game, really, because Black... It is winning, it's a commanding position. You know, it's just taking a piece count, really, with uh, just a whole rook up, right? But black seriously would have got the pieces in the game. Uh, and instead, from the black player's point of view, you know, this is just a greedy move uh, and an unnecessary move. But, you know, black's played fairly, fairly well so far. Uh, this is just, uh, you know, an oversight of, of this idea, the queen coming in to uh, f7. So what black needs to do in this position, if it was Black who was doing the analysis, this would also be the key position. You know, this is the absolute key position of the game. And if it was a Black player, I'd be doing the same. I'd be looking at this position, and I'd be importing it. I'd be studying this position more. But from White's point of view, which is what we're looking at, it, Black did blunder, and you know, White didn't immediately take advantage of that because sort of played around. Uh, so the next move is is key, really. So if I was doing a, a PGN file, what I would do, I would copy this Fen position. You can't see that because that's just below the screen, but it's just below the chessboard. I copy the fen, and then I would like look about adding these moves to something. Uh, and you know, I just I copy this position, and then I, I still have it as black to play. Black to plays the incorrect move, taking the g pawn, and then I would sort of trade and consider looking at this position. You know, and and if I was setting puzzles, I set a lot of puzzles. And that's the kind of thing that I quite quite like enjoy doing, and for the chessable courses and things, this would be sort of a, a really nice puzzle actually. Uh, so yeah, I'd look at that, and that's the winning move. So then, if you put it into Chessable or into you know your own database, you can train this particular pattern, this particular position, uh, not this one, obviously, uh, <laughs> or that one, not that this one, but you know that one. So we want to be looking at this idea, really like ganging up on the back rank. So that's one of the key takeaways for me from this game, for, from the white player. So I've just got two additional points I want to mention in this video. The first one is when you are doing the analysis, always think like what was I thinking at that time I was playing this game, right? And then you can sort of compare your original thought process to that of the analysis. And that can be useful. That can be really helpful. And that's why it's important to analyze the game as, as uh, quickly as possible, really. So your thoughts are still fresh in your mind. And my second point is... I would also take advantage of this move times feature uh, on, on certainly on Lee Chess. I'm not sure. It's probably on the other websites as well. And what you can do with that, you can look at the, the games, look at where you were moving in the overall game. So if you were moving too quickly in positions that were complex, then that's something that you can work on, you know, identifying your areas where you need to slow down a little bit. And it can also work the opposite as well. You know, where you're spending too long in positions when you've really only got one playable move. So I'd take advantage of that, and that can really help you with the, the analysis. So I'll just say one last point, uh, and that is once you've got a collection of sort of 20 or 30 games, 
what you then you need to do is analyze them as a batch and I'll, do, I'll probably do a separate video on that one actually because it's, it's a whole other thing when you do analyze whole chess games as a batch you can find particular themes that can direct you to the different types of study so thanks for watching this video hope you got something from it and take care